say, why don't the Christian just leave Iraq and move to another country and be done with it? To this question, we, should res we would respond, why should we leave our country? What have we done? While our ancestors experienced all kinds of persecution, they stayed in their land, building a culture that has served the humanity for ages. We, as Christians, do not want or deserve to leave or be forced out of our country. An emotional sister Diana pleading for help before the House Foreign Affairs Committee in Washington this morning as Christians in Iraq and Syria suffer atrocities at the hands of ISIS. Christians are fleeing the Middle East as the brutality of ISIS causes a, max, a mass exodus and that reign of terror has many calling it genocide. Joining us now from Newsmax New York, George Marlin, chairman of Aid to the Church in Need. George is also the author of the new book, Christian Persecutions in the Middle East, a 21st Century Tragedy, which will come out next month. George, how bad is it in Iraq and Syria for Christians? Well, Congressman, first of all, thanks for having me today to speak on this very important topic. It is awful for Christians throughout the Middle East. And let us remind everybody that Christianity, Christians were in the Middle East 600 years before the Prophet Muhammad was, was born. Two weeks ago, I hosted the Bishop of Aleppo, Syria, the Archbishop, Archbishop Jean Bott. He was here in the United States. We had him in Boston, New York, and Washington, did a lot of television, did a Newsmax show, as a matter of fact. The, I spent a lot of time with him. We had a private lunch one day with His Eminence Timothy Cardinal Dole of New York, and we heard the horror stories that were going on. In the city of Aleppo, two-thirds of the Christians have been driven out there. They're not living, they're dispossessed people. They are not living in the camps in Syria because the camps of refugees are just for Muslims. Christians are afraid to go there, so they're living in churches, they're living in church facilities all throughout Syria. While I was with the Archbishop, he learned that day that his residence, his cathedral, and his office building in Aleppo was bombed again. That's Syria. The same story we're hearing over and again in Iraq. We're hearing it all through the Middle East. But I think it's important to point out, Congressman Mitt, why I wrote this book is to point out these persecutions in the Middle East did not just begin with ISIS. ISIS. They have been going on specifically in Turkey, Egypt, Lebanon, Syria, Iraq, Iran, Saudi Arabia, and Sudan throughout the 21st century and before that. So I'm hoping that people like you and shows like yours, we begin to we, we, we awaken the West onto what's going on in the Middle East and that they can't ignore it much longer. That sister you put on a little while ago tells a story. Why should Christians have to live a homeland that they've been at for over 2,000 years? So it's, it's a tragic situation. I define it as genocide based on the UN Article 2 of 1948, and it's time the West woke up to the basis of Western civilization, which is Judeo-Christian traditions, and did something about this genocide, in my judgment, that's going on in the Middle East today. And George, you've just told us this genocide did not begin with ISIS, as horrible as the atrocities from ISIS have been. Give us the timeline. What was the trigger point for the new persecution, this genocide against Christians, George? <clears throat> if you look at it historically, uh, going back to the year 600, for most of the time, after the Muslim jihads uh, took over the Middle East, of course, then there were the Crusades, which Bernard Lewis, the distinguished Princeton authority on the Middle East, pointed out that the Crusades was just a holy war to fight back against the holy war jihad of the Muslims. Sure, it was brutal, but it was Christians trying to take back lands that were theirs. After the Crusades were done, Christians pretty much lived peacefully, but as second-class citizens. Mostly in the Middle East, they had to pay a special tax. And from time to time, they were persecuted, but they had the same language. Many of their cultural attributes were the same. It started with the radical Islamic terrorist groups that started coming about in the late 19th century, early 20th century, groups like the Muslim Brotherhood, which were founded early in the 20th century. And so we've seen this movement to a more radical Islamist view. And at the end of the day, their purpose is, is to wipe out Christianity. Uh, ISIS in particular has made that perfectly clear in pointing out that they want to go to Rome and destroy Rome, which they look as the foundation of Christianity, although the foundation of Christianity was in the Middle East. So we have seen throughout the 21st century the unthinkable is real. People like Secretary of State Kerry remind us time and again, behavior like this 
uh, is not acceptable in the 21st century. Uh, we, don't have, we don't act like we're in the 19th century. Well, they are acting like they're in previous times. The, the unthinkable is very real. And sadly, as we look at even Iraq, when during our occupation there, Congressman, 2003, 2010, thousands of Christians were murdered during our occupation there. Uh, Christians who were hired by the U.S. government to do certain services in Iraq were murdered. Americans who patronized a restaurant or a business owned by, by Christians, the businesses were later destroyed by Muslims. So we saw thousands of people killed while we were occupying it, and since the occupation has been over and ISIS has taken over, thousands more have been killed, but they're going beyond that to wipe out any, any part of Christianity, institutionally and mindful as of well that, as George, the people forg themselves. Forgive the interruption, but the time is short. About 40 seconds left. Your organization, Aid to the Church in Need, has launched a campaign to aid Christians in Syria and Iraq. How is that campaign going and what can people do to help? I'm extraordinary. I'm happy to report that the results have been extraordinary. Aid of the Church in Need is a papal agency under the auspices of the Pope. We've raised millions for the Middle East. Uh, we're continuing to do all sorts of humane work, helping the institutional church as well as Christians of all, all rights in the Middle East. So if you go to aidofthechurchinneed.com, you'll find out everything you need to know. You'll see the stories that are going on. And what I try to do in the book, Congressman, is take those stories, those anecdotal stories, so people could see the individual suffering. And that's what I do in every country. So and people want to help aid of the church in need is, is doing remarkable work in that field. And era. we see a copy of your book that will be released next month. George Marlin, we thank you for your time and we'll be right back.